Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to my guide about this new cool indie game called As Far As The Eye. This is a turn-based nomadic village builder with stunningly beautiful art design and civilization-like gameplay, but on a much smaller scale. It's made by the developers at Unexpected and published by Goblin Studios, who have granted me a copy so I can show off this game to you. In this video I'm going to give you some direction and tips on how to start your journey in this truly inspired and innovative twist on some of the oldest turn-based gameplay mechanics with RPG and roguelike survival elements. Your objective in this game is to get your villagers called pupils to the center of the world so they can survive the coming flood which will drown all the lowlands. This is an alien civilization on an alien world but the resources are very earth-like and the times are kinda medieval. My name is Peter and if you're new to my channel I would like to welcome you and point you to a playlist full of similar videos about new AAA and indie games. As these pupils move in nomadic village caravans, they stop between each leg of the journey to stock up on food and necessary supplies. Sometimes they have to fix a bridge for example to continue to the next halt, so you have to collect more construction oriented materials. The first thing you have to get used to is that these pupils are shapeshifters and they change their bodies depending on the task they are given. The more time they spend in a single body type, for example a builder shape, the more experience they gain and better they can get at doing their job. You can even upgrade pupils like in an RPG using their skill wheel inside which you have separate skill trees for each profession. But to gain most experience from each profession, your pupils have to work through specialized buildings for each resource. Now that we know all of this, let's start the pupils on a new journey towards the center and see what we need to do to keep them alive and reach the journey's end. Just like all living creatures, they also need food to survive. You should specialize at least one of your pupils as a gatherer of raw food like pumpkins right off the bat and also construct the harvest hut right next to the pumpkin rich hexes. This will let this pupil earn experience points in this profession and once he amasses enough of it, you can specialize them further as a fruit gatherer. This increases the speed of collection and reduces the travel time to and from the collection building. The more pupils in your nomadic village, the more food you will need. So later down the line, you will start using farms, growing more kinds of raw food and using a baker, chef or a cook to combine different raw food types into baked bread and other meal recipes which will last longer and keep pupils better fed. If you run out of food, the pupils won't die instantly, but you will lose health each turn until they get more food or die whenever their HP drops down to zero. Wood is easy to come by in this game, but just as pumpkins, each hex will eventually be exhausted of its supply. You should build a sawmill next to several hexes with trees, which will be a draw point for the resources instead of the caravan and will provide experience points for the pupil working there. You can specialize your pupil, who will first be just a picker, as a woodcutter and further improve the resource collection. It is all the same with the rest of the specializations, hunter, fisher, stone gatherer, miner, shepherd and all the others. Each pupil can be specialized in each profession and then fully upgraded by keeping him at the same job and using the appropriate specialized building. Once you have some of these basic supplies set up like pumpkins and wood, you can start using a designated pupil for building all the other collection and harvesting buildings. You can choose to spend only wood and build a stationary building or spend wool and stone as well to make mobile buildings which you can pick up and carry with you between holds. The space on the caravan is limited and you have to count on carrying over resources as well. So choose wisely what to build and leave behind and what to carry over to the next halt depending on which resources you will need to stockpile once you get there. Buildings can also be upgraded if you can spare the resources, so if you plan on investing into them, do that for the mobile buildings. Now if you have been enjoying this video, please do not mind me reminding you to hit that like button below and recommend this video to all the new players. You can also subscribe if you would like to see more videos about this and other similar games in the future. In as far as the eye, there is a map on which you can always see what will be the requirements for successfully navigating the road from that next halt. When you do get there, you have to locate and exploit the resources that you will need for the next leg of the journey. Always get the food first or risk your pupils dying from starvation. To increase the size of the caravan and to be able to have more villagers, you have to find and bring to your main caravan more specimens of the rhinophilus, animals which along with some resources can be turned into camp extensions. From time to time you will find new rhinophilus in different holds as well as new pupils which you will run into in the remains which are old abandoned structures. You can also trade some goods to the passing caravans and they might just drop you an additional pupil. 
You can specialize some pupils as druids and those will be able to tell you which rewards you can expect or even remove negative effects before you go exploiting remains. But this is something I will go into more details about and other similar mechanics in one of my future videos. Besides these, there are also sacred sites that are places of appeal to spirits scattered all over the world. Majestic as they are, they can only be explored once and offer rewards of various natures. You can make offerings in sacred sites or plunder them, but never forget, you will have to bear the consequences of your actions. Auras, on the other hand, are natural points of interest bursting with magic. They protect the surrounding nature, going as far as preventing the resources from being harvested. Each step on the journey you are in is a race with time, as you have a limited number of turns before each halt is flooded with the oncoming tsunami of water. Because of this, you have to learn to be very efficient with harvesting, collecting and exploration. Each movement point of each villager is a resource which must not be wasted and everything has to be harvested in the right order just before it is needed. Making a thousand meals for your pupils will not help you if you fail to harvest enough wood to make the mine or quarry which you need to be able to extract stone or ore necessary for the next leg of the journey and reach the next halt. Besides the danger of exceeding the time limit and getting drowned by the water, your villagers will also be hit by certain types of disasters which happen as the wave gets closer. On some occasions you will get a warning telling you what to do to minimize the problems and damage to your village or villagers, but on some turns there will be no warning and you will have to deal with the aftermath. There is a lot more I want to tell and show you about this game but this should be just enough to get you past the first few halts and help you learn the ropes. I hope you manage to get your tribe of pupils to the safe haven and I wish you all happy gaming.